the Palladians, to a large extent, are us, humans. Uh, they look very human, just like humans. They're taller, very often, um, because they live in a less gravity. They live in less gravity. Uh, so they're like maybe seven feet around there somewhere. They love the color blue. And so their uniforms are blue with little silver things on them. And uh, they're very attractive. They look just like a human. And they work with the Arcturians and the Antorians and the Venusians. They are the ones that come to Earth a lot uh, because they look just like humans. And uh, they understand humans, and they have been working with humans for a very long time. And their culture is not that different, largely because a lot of Palladians chose to come to Earth long, long ago. And uh, so they are here now to assist us and to help us, the members of humanity, to get through this difficult time, you know, that darkest night before the dawn, and that the night's pretty dark right now, we're having some scary stuff going on. Um, and so they're more active, and they are so human looking that, that if they take off their uniform and just look like a regular Joe, you could run into him in the grocery store and you wouldn't even, oh, that's a tall, handsome person with blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm, yeah, but that would be it. You wouldn't think, oh, it's a, it's a galactic. And so because of that, they know a lot more about humanity than the other uh, galactics do because they intermingle with them so often. And uh, they'll come into our dreams a lot and come into our meditations. And they're very uh, clear. By clear, I mean that they could say a lot in just a few words. And so, uh, like when I channel the Palladians, it's like my challenge to, oh, okay, I get, can I do that? Can I do it like that? But I've been doing it for so long now, I just, whatever they say, I, I just do. Um, they're always positive. They're always kind. You know, they're, they're wonderful. And uh, they, if you see a starship in the sky, it's Palladian. And if you see a cloud that looks like a starship, it's a starship that's cloaked by a cloud. So they like to hang out in the clouds, you know, they have shown themselves more often and they come into people's dreams pretty often. When they come into your dreams, they don't come into your dreams specifically looking like a Palladian. They just come into your dreams, especially if you need some help or you're needing something. So they're very telepathic and empathic. And they, they work with the Antarians from Antares and uh, with the Arcturians from Arcturus. But the Arcturians are kind of like, if you put it like if it was in a, a ship, you know, the captain would be up at the thing at the top, you know, and looking out over everything. Okay, that would be the Arcturians. They're like the captain of the ship. Now the crew... Uh, that would be Palladians. And, and the Arcturians, I mean the Antarians. And uh, the Antarians can appear to be human quite easily. So they, they will likely be there too. And who knows how often we, we run into these people and we don't even know. We don't even know. The Arcturians were the first people that came in, and they uh, told me to write it down, to write this down. Whatever I get, to write it down, because the human brain is not used to hearing 
you know, working with that frequency. And then after that, the Palladians uh, came in. And if you look like a, a beehive, you know, the Arcturians, they're like the queen bee. The Palladians, they're like all the bees. You know, they're buzzing around all over the place and getting all the honey and, uh, and, and sharing the honey. I mean, they're, they're so kind. They're so nice. And they're, um, it's almost like you know them. And, and probably you do. Because if you have any kind of a waking experience of that, then that's probably because you've been prepared with several dreams about that. And, and, and maybe you'll have a couple of sightings. And you'll go, that looked like a starship. No, it's just a cloud. No, it's a starship that looks like a cloud. I bet you it's a Palladian starship that looks like a cloud. You know? And so those starships that look like a cloud, those are probably Palladians because they, they're the first in team. I forget the military team, but, you know, the first pe people to come in. And, and they can intermingle with the people so easily that nobody knows. And therefore, they get a good sense of exactly what's going on. And, boy, we've been giving them an earful lately, haven't we? <laughs> we've had some stuff going on lately. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wow, but how reassuring it is to know that we have that much support and guidance to where these higher beings would manifest themselves on, on Earth, here on Gaia. And I would love to ask a little bit about the Pleiadian connection to nature and how they view Gaia as their sister. So not only are they getting an idea of what the humans are going through, but they're understanding Gaia and her plant and animal life and what that process is looking like at the same time. So perhaps you could talk a little bit about uh, the Pleiadians' connection to Gaia herself. Well, she's, she's their twin sister, practically. You know, uh, they understand uh, planetary Earth more than any of the other galactic beings because they can... Uh, walk amongst them and nobody even knows that's who they are and then they'll go back to the ship and they'll share everything and so everybody will communicate with each other. They feel very kind, very patient, uh, yet very powerful. And that's a really good thing for humans to have an experience because kind and patience and powerful doesn't always go together. You know, sometimes somebody's kind and patient, but don't really know how to use their power. Um, and the Palladians are really assisting people to feel their power within. So that there isn't a need to have power over or to be victimized by power over. And if people feel that they are being victimized by power over, then call in the Palladians. Because the Palladians will, it's, it's actually what I have found, and I think it's the case for a lot of people, that uh, when you're talking to a higher dimensional being, if you don't write it down, 3D brain can't keep it. So you have to, and I know I keep saying that, but you, you won't be able to keep it. And, and then therefore you might get some of your 3D stuff mixed up with the higher dimensional stuff. Um, and if you do it on a regular basis, same time, same place, you don't have to meditate for an hour to get yourself to that state because you build that energy field. Now, that's what Pleiadians do. They help build energy forms. And boy, are they busy now because there's a lot of really negative energy forms like right now. People are really scared. Uh, and there's a, and that's not, doesn't mean that they're not brave because the humans have been incredibly brave throughout this. And they've really been doing their best to think in terms of what is good for all. And that's another reason 
why the Palladians are so much here within this now. Because the Palladians, they have, I mean, it, it's, it's a whole planet. It's, you know, it's more than one. It's the Pleiades. And so, therefore, they interact and interface with people in all types of different manners because they want to stay connected because they know that uh, the more people that are on the same channel, on the same time, on the same place, the more power they can hold. And so that's one of the main things that the Palladians are coming here to Earth now because people are so separated. Families are separated. Uh, single people have to stay all by themselves in a house. That would just be scary. I would hate that. They'll come into your dreams more often too. They they will come into your dreams, and they'll leave like maybe a sentence. You might wake up with a sentence, and I have a habit, especially when I was starting. I had a habit that, uh, in fact, they told me the Arcturians told me. They said, "All right, if you want to have a communication with us, we want you to know that that communication will actually be occurring while you're asleep." Because your awakened self isn't ready for that yet. And so what we want you to do is that have a pencil and paper next to your bed. And start, as soon as you wake up, start writing, writing down what happened in your dreams. Write down all your dreams. Write down all your dreams. And when you write down your dreams and go back and read them, you can say, oh, look at this dream led to that dream, led to that dream. Oh, there it goes back to that dream. And so, therefore, uh, and in a way, they're like teaching us to put the puzzle together because Gaia, again, is a free will planet. They just can't come in and say, okay, guys, you know, get your, pack your bags, you know, it's pretty nasty here. Come on, the spaceships are Ready, let's go. No, this is our planet. We chose to came here. We messed it up. Humans messed this up. Humans have to fix it. Um, and the Palladians are the fixers. They're good at fixing. And so if you feel like, oh, how did I get myself in such a pickle? You know, then call in the Palladians. Again, write it down. And if you have that same time, same place, and you write it down, you know, you can put it on your computer, you can write it hand, hand by hand. Uh, some people might like to draw pictures. If you can have pictures and words, that's even better. Because the pictures will open up and awaken your right brain, which is more holistic and looks at pictures. And the things that you actually document that goes more to your left brain. It, it, but if you're left-handed instead of right-handed, you could be reversed. But some left-handed people are kind of like both ways. They can do it either way. So you all have to kind of tune into yourself and see what works best for yourself. And then once you have written down what you've received, then you want to share it with others. Because the energy not to you, but through you. And, and be so grateful that you were chosen, that you were chosen to actually be a channel through which this higher dimension of thought can flow. And it will change your life. It will change your life. You'll look at the world like before the world was the light, you know, through the glass dimly. And now suddenly it's like 12 o'clock noon and bright sun and blue sky, kind of like your yard. <laughs> bright sky and blue sky. <laughs> and that's Danny's yard. But maybe you have a yard that's got bright sky and blue sky. You're lucky if you do. <laughs> so, um, so now let's, t all, all of us, let's just take a long, slow, deep breath. And I'm going to count the breathing because you want the exhale to be twice as long as the inhale. And we'll just do it a couple of times. 
Okay. Somehow breathe in, 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 and hold, hold, out. One, two, three, release. And release it through your mouth. <sighs> Hear that sound of your own breath. And then you can do it again. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold, hold, hold. And breathe out slowly, imagining a starship. A starship, a starship, a starship. <sighs> so, Daddy, what what does your starship look like? You just imagined. My starship that I just imagined it is circular. It's pretty big, and it has a center in it, almost like a ring, to where you could go up in your light body in the middle of the ring and then if you go up a little bit further you'd be in like that main part of the ship mine's a traditional starship i tried to draw it a couple times uh and with me there's like uh the windows right you know it's so it's like a, a saucer two saucers put together so it's a round saucer at the top and a round saucer in the bottom but it's not really a circle because it's got up at the top and down at the bottom and um, the, uh, the first thing that I get is the color blue. And I get the color blue because it's like that blue sky shining on me type thing. And, and blue is, is a calming color. And it's like a protective color. And, and the, the Pleiadians are very protective. They, they protect us and so if who knows how many things that they have saved us from because they want us to be able to go back home to them via our own personal um, transition into our fifth dimensional self and that transition uh, begins with a third dimensional self releasing all guilt you want to release all guilt and 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 take in all forgiveness. Don't blame yourself for anything. Don't feel guilty for anything. And if you can't get through that, then you don't go to a counselor and, and have somebody help you get through it. But as long as you have that guilt, that's going to lower your frequency rate. And it's going to make it more difficult for you to uh, have these experiences. And and the other thing that's very important is that you have to allow your imagination to come in. Because like I said before, the starships, they will uh, go into a cloud or they'll hide behind a cloud because they know that people aren't ready. But they will kind of like peekaboo to people that are ready. And so there are people like me that says, oh, I saw a shark, I saw one, me too, me too. Okay. so. But they can feel that energy field of somebody who's not afraid and who is excited. Oh, wow, can I, you know, take me with you. Uh, probably the starship won't land and take us with them, but they wouldn't have to land. Uh, and they take us with them in our night bodies. So while we are sleeping in our, you know, first, second, third, even fourth dimensional self is, you know, soundly asleep. Our fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensional self is just, just yawning and waking up and saying, ah, okay, let's go visit the family, you know. <laughs> and so then they are able to just transmute, you know, they, uh, by trans, transmute, transmutation means it happens like instantly. And it, uh, it changes almost like from the core of, of of the uh, of each cell because they're down here wearing the human cell which is kind of like if you have clothes on that are a little too tight or maybe not very comfortable so you know when you go to bed or you want you came home and you relax you rip all that stuff off and put something cozy on so that's what they'll do they'll rip off all that stuff and 
you know, put on their cozy uh, Palladian clothes and go back to their ship and visit their ship. And uh, they'll meet with their friends and meet with their family and interact. They'll report everything that they have discovered and then they will go into places uh, where they uh, have, not debates, but where they have group discussions, brainstorming, where they all brainstorm. And so they share, everybody, they all share what they've experienced and what they see is going on. Boy, would I love to be a fly on the wall up there now, wouldn't you? Find out what are they talking about? I want to hear it. So I'm going to try that at my next channel. I'm going to see if they'll tell me what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So they said they'll tell me a little. About, okay. Uh, they have great empathy for what humanity is going through now. And they're really proud of us, which feels good. They're really proud of us. We've had some not great leaders whom we will not mention, um, but some really important people and just regular everyday people. They're just doing what they need to do. And you don't see a lot of riots. You don't see people coming out with guns going crazy. You know, people, they're, they're doing what they're told to do. You know, not that it's a bad thing. They're they, there's lots of research if they you know have any doubt about whether or not they should stay with themselves um, and they can talk to other people and find out about that and that's good don't do anything that you don't feel good about and know that when you're doing the right thing it does feel good well, that's the monitor but you know you're doing the right thing unless of course you're an evil person but I don't think any evil person would be here today do you Danny I don't think no and I got to say, I've been talking to uh, the population of people all over the world for I, early 1980s. I don't think I've met one evil person. I mean, an evil person wouldn't go to get a reading, I'm sure, but, <laughs> but maybe they would, but they don't come to me. And maybe I'm just protected. That's why they don't come to me. Uh, and we can all be protected. We are all protected. We have to know it though, because if we don't know we're protected, then we have fear. And it's just like, how does I, like a lion, know the deer that they could catch easily? Because the deer knows the lion could catch him dearly, easily, and the deer is afraid. So they're going to pick the afraid one because that eh, make it easy on themselves. Um, and what we have to do as uh, the guidance is to unite everyone in a way that they know that we are all one. This is our planet. We love this planet. We know that there's been a lot of mistakes and uh, there's been some poor, poor decisions made by inefficient people, who we will not speak of, uh, that have made things worse instead of better. But when humans, if you could just take some time first thing in the morning is good but if the first thing in the morning is your most hectic time you've got little kids you've got to get off to school etc stuff like that find whatever is your your download time the time where you could put hopefully a whole hour wow a whole hour to yourself and what and you go to that same place if you go at that same time and you have your computer or pencil and paper, and you say, dear one, how can I assist with Gaia's ascension? You'll get answers. You will get answers. 
and then you will begin to remember because if you just wrote this this is really weird i've got to write this letter to a galactic sure but what the heck i'll give it a try and then you write it down you get an answer that you didn't know before you wrote it down then you start remembering and it's the remembering that's so important <laughs>